Hey Team Bio, welcome to your screencast on chemical bonding. Okay, so um, at the top here, we have, a, I don't know if this is the right word, but an abbreviated periodic table. It's not the entire thing. Um, and it also doesn't give us any information about the nucleus. The focus of this view of the periodic table is solely and completely on electrons and specifically on electrons in different valence shells. Okay, so let's just talk about what an electron shell is. Okay, shells contain electron orbitals. Um, and orbitals are, they're, they're defined as discrete volumes of space in which electrons are likely to be found. So let's write that down. Okay, every orbital contains two electrons. Or I should say, let me rephrase that. Each orbital can hold two electrons. It doesn't always contain two electrons. Each orbital can hold two electrons. Um, okay, so in the first shell um, of uh, in these electron configuration diagrams, um, there is only one orbital. And so it's full when there's two electrons. Um, this outermost shell of electrons is a special, we give it a special shell, a special name. So the outermost shell of, um, for any period is, is called the valence shell. And um, it's the outermost shell. And the valence shell determines the chemical properties of the element. Um, in a sense, atoms want to fill up their outermost valence shell full with electrons. And so if we look at hydrogen here, um, we can see that it has only one electron. But to be full, it would want to have two. And so it's going to associate, it's going to form associations with other elements um, in order to fill this outermost shell. Um, more on that later. Whereas helium, it is it has two electrons. So it's really happy just all on its own. It's part of um, a uh, 
group of elements known as the noble gases, which just like to stand alone. They do not want to form bonds with any other elements. Okay, um, so the first shell only has one orbital, so it needs two electrons to fill. The second and third shells both have four orbitals. So they're full with eight electrons. Okay, so atoms whose shells are not full, they tend to interact with other atoms in ways that allow them to complete or, or fill their valence shells. Uh, so chemical interactions donate or receive or they share electrons and this results in atoms staying close together uh, and these we call these chemical interactions chemical bonds. Okay, there are three different types of chemical bonds that we're going to talk about today and they all have to do with um, atoms trying to, well not all of them, Two of them have to do with atoms trying to complete their valence shells. Um, okay, so let's talk. The first type of bond that we're going to talk about is called an ionic, oops, ionic bond. Okay, this is a donate. slash receive electron type of bond. Um, okay, let's talk about table salts. NaCl. Table salt is an association, a one-to-one -one association of chlorine to sodium. It's a type of ionic bond. How does it happen? Okay, here we have sodium. You can see sodium down here in the third shell. Notice that it has one electron in its outermost valence shell, and to be full, it wants eight. The other option, instead of filling this whole valence shell, is just to get rid of this one pesky electron, electron that is in, it's causing it great uh, ire because this outer, uh, it, could, it could have a full outer valence shell if it just got rid of this one electron. Over here, chlorine, we can see its outer shell has seven. So it just wants one electron to complete its outermost shell. So this is a perfect situation because sodium can get rid of this one electron to give itself a full outer valence shell, a full second shell, and just completely discard its third shell. Um, it can donate one electron, and chlorine can accept that one electron. Notice here that once we've done that, they're both happy. Sodium has a full outer shell, chlorine has a full outer shell because this electron has moved from sodium to chloride. But we've created here two ions. One positive ion and one negative ion. Now, you know opposites attract, and if you have a positive ion and a negative ion next to each other, they are going to want to stick together because positive likes to stick to negative. Um, so uh, this attraction between the negative and positive ions holds this atom, or sorry, this um, molecule together. Okay, so that's an example of an ionic bond. A, the next type of bond we're going to talk about is a covalent bond. Uh, 
Um, this is more of a sharing electrons situation. So unlike ionic bonds, which one donates an electron and one receives an electron, resulting in two ions, and then it's the ions that are holding them together, covalent bonds really share electrons, and that's what creates their, um, uh, their attractions to one another. Um, okay, so here we have a group of a bunch of different types of covalent bonds. Uh, here we have the molecular formula. So this is just telling us um, what is what are the elements involved in the bond and how many of each element are there. So the first one is H2, hydrogen gas. Um, it's got two hydrogens in it. The second schematic here is the electron distribution diagram. So this is showing us that so um, hydrogen only comes to the party with one electron but it wants two to complete its outermost shell. So one hydrogen brings one electron, and the other hydrogen brings the other electron, and they both share it between them. And you can see how the electrons are distributed. They're held between both of these um, nucleus nuclei kind of in the center of them. Um, the next schematic is just our structural formula. So it's a little bit more information than the molecular formula. It's showing us how the structures are paired together, but maybe a little bit less information than the electron distribution diagram. It's not showing us exactly how the electrons are held in place. The, we're seeing these two electrons um, that, are, that are actually being shared between these two uh, nuclei um, as just a little line. So this little... Um, line actually represents a pair of shared electrons, as you can see here. Okay, and then the last one is the space filling model. This is telling us a little bit more about how big the two atoms are and how much space each of their electron clouds would occupy. Um, okay. So you can see here we have hydrogen, um, and it each hydrogen atom wants one extra electron to fill its outermost shell so it can form a stable um, bond, uh, just one single bond to complete its outermost shell. Oxygen, however, it needs um, two electrons to complete its outermost shell. So both of these oxygen atoms uh, share two pairs of electrons, so it results in a double bond. Um, methane, CH4, we can see that carbon needs four, so oxygen needs two electrons to fill its outermost shell, carbon needs um, four, uh, one, two, three, four, and so it forms four bonds with other atoms. And um, hydrogen wants to form one, so there you go, methane. And then here's an example of water. Uh, hydrogen wants to form one bond each, and oxygen wants to form two, so H2O. Um, okay, these three examples are what we call nonpolar covalent. bonds. Whereas water is what we call a polar covalent bond. Um, you're going to have much more information about this in your next screencast about water. But um, what I want you to know 
uh, from this is that it, a polar equivalent bond results in a final molecule that has uh, a, an array of charges across it. So water molecule is going to have a slightly, this is a delta for slightly, negative, and this side of the molecule will be slightly positive. Um, and the fact that this molecule has a slightly negative side and a slightly positive side leads to our last type of bond, which is called a hydrogen bond. Okay, the hydrogen bonds in this, so the, the bonds holding each of these water molecules together are polar bonds. But the bonds between water molecules are hydrogen bonds. And they result from this fact that this water molecule has, this side of it has a positive charge and this side of the other water molecule has a negative charge. Notice how the hydrogen bonds always form between the hydrogen side of one water, water, uh, one water molecule and the oxygen side of another water molecule. This is because the hydrogen side has a slightly positive charge and the oxygen side has a slightly negative charge. So every um, hydrogen bond that you see here depicted as these dotted lines is between the oxygen side of this water molecule and the hydrogen side of another. Oxygen side of this, hydrogen side of this, hydrogen side of this, oxygen side of this. Okay, so these are hydrogen bonds. In terms of bond strength, the strongest bonds are covalent bonds. In the middle, we have ionic. And the weakest, the easiest to break, are hydrogen. OK, more on hydrogen bonding next screencast when we talk more about the structure and the function of water. OK, that's all.